Hello, welcome to another toneless landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, giving you an old school M. Francis style video. Maybe just a minute longer than I like to go normally, but uh, it's featuring a redo called Sunset River. Uh, you're looking at the previous version right now, and I did some changes, which you saw it before. Um, you're going to see a big chunk of this painting session is the initial painting session, and this painting um, was distinguished by being a study of a painting I did, like 1824, which I absolutely hated and absolutely bombed. And um, there's a few compositional things I should have picked up on. Now, I, I did this back in. I should know already. Sorry. Oh, see what old Windows will tell me about that. If I got the file from the, uh, <laughs> did it in 2016, all right. Uh, it looks like around September or August. So I, I, I actually liked the 5x7 pretty well. It did end up in a, a box of redos, but you'll see some of the things I've redone are pretty subtle. It's not going through some major changes. Uh, anyway, I recently took a nice photo of it, so now I can... Uh, give you guys kind of a video of the redo process and of course the initial painting process where you see I'm painting on the burnt sienna back in 2016 uh, and I painted on this red color for ages before um, switching over to more umbery tones both uh, really dark umbers and then lighter umbers in uh, recent times on uh, MDF uh, this would have been painted on pine, by the way. So, anyway, uh, I like to on these shorter videos. Oh, by the way, if you're not subscribed, please do. We got a, you know, we got two types of videos here. We got these quicker ones, and then we got the live ones, which go quite long. I've been playing with the idea of releasing the live ones both as a 15-minute sped up and as a full length. So. Maybe in the comments you could let me know what you think of that. If you think that's a good idea, I might try it either way. That's as my way. But I always like to hear from people. I leave me any comment you want. You can leave me a comment saying, "Mike, you got a big head." You know, don't please don't hurt my feelings. But you get what I'm saying. <laughs> I do have a big head. Yeah. Anyway, I thought I would address. Uh, we have a subscriber to the channel named Jigger, and he had asked me a question via email and I thought oh I could just type and type and type and uh, refresh my um, whole incidence of uh, corporal tunnel all over again or I could just address it here in the video and then send him an email saying yeah check out the video and a really good question he was asking about and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and, and read it real quick here but uh, uh, he is mentioning where someone has suggested I should try painting, uh, doing a painting from memory. Um, he says, is that suggestion a learning tool of some kind for beginners, or what the heck is that? I'm trying, racking my brain, trying to figure out what would be the point. And uh, that's his question. So, would it be a, a good or a disastrous result? Well, it's like a few this is like this would have been quite an essay I think I could cover all this though and, oh I don't know the 10 minutes we got left here uh, first off it's not a crazy idea um, and what really strikes me from the idea of doing paintings from memory um, first of all it really uh, it depends on where you are in your career like um, someone like Georgia Ness did quite a few paintings without any reference uh, in his late years, but he also really enjoyed making paintings from the sketches of friends or ghost images on other paintings that were underneath his, he would cover with paint. Um, he was always looking for something, you know, to spark a painting. I think it's very difficult, um, if, if not impossible, to uh, generate super original stuff directly from your imagination. Now that said, uh, after doing thousands and thousands of paintings, you have some archetypical um, uh, forms in your head. So it would be very easy for me to generate paintings now. Whereas 
one of the first things I just if you guys want to laugh I, I can show you one of the very first paintings I generated this is in the digital realm uh, and with no reference and it was it was so funny because the composition was like it was like a round little lollipop tree and the side of a hill and it was rendered very nicely with very good colors but I didn't have these uh, archetypical um, trees in my head like I like I do now so I could probably pull some stuff off now I would even even now I would start with some little thumbnails and there's a lot of things you can base a painting on um, the other thing I would say like almost uh, everything in life whether like uh, like some people follow recipes and some people like to just look in the cupboard and start concocting uh, dinner you know and I'd say and both approaches are very valid it all depends on your personality and what it is you're trying to accomplish as an artist regarding that commenter and his suggestion that I do things from memory to me uh, it, oh well, that gets back to the last thing I just said so what is what is it that interests me about landscape painting what am I trying to achieve what is the end result of my painting trying to do in my case it's really trying to convey emotions and it's also um, an, an, uh, an object of an art object it's it's a uh, to me the landscape is a vehicle for expression I'm not even really like a super into nature type person I really love nature and I love the beauty of nature but I spend most of my time indoors in the studio, <laughs> you know, not out reveling in nature. Um, but nature, to me, is like a universal vehicle for the expression of, of uh, emotion, and this is one of the reasons why I paint colorful paintings that have, you know, intense skies or intense deep colors and and a bit of darkness as well. I mean, that's all of that's like how I am as a person. Um, I could can come up with uh, probably quite a few uh, decent landscape paintings just out of my own head but ultimately without some sort of um, reference I feel like you end up just being very circular and uh, I, I for one need outside stimuli coming in to really play off of and riff off of and uh, that's uh, in my case is photos and generally photos that have been um, extensively manipulated by me before even sitting down at the easel the whole creative process starts and that's actually one of the reasons why I don't spend uh, I don't share all of my reference in the live sessions there's some things I know that are just not they're not designed for people to see they're just designed to be grist for the mill. It's just designed to prompt a painting and um, that's why I don't share some of my reference. I just think it's ugly uh, to to a lay person. Uh, to me it's all triggering and so I might really oversaturate things or I might have my contrast um, uh, out of whack or I may have a bizarre color combinations that I know I'll reconcile while doing my painting things like that um, I got something there I was going to put in my mouth and chew on but I'll spare you all right so we're now into revision time it looks like I was trying to do this live and then sometimes this sort of thing happens uh, I get interrupted the um, the owner of the shop comes in and, and watches videos or something on uh, or there's just people around and I can't uh, like people come to see me and I just I really can't do the live thing uh, with any sort of audience and my audience is you and you are um, uh, you don't really get the chance to say anything because <laughs> you're gonna see everything after it's done and you can see actually some of the things I'm doing to fix now talk about imagination like I am not using any reference right now I'm dealing with the painting strictly on the terms of it as a painting and uh, because I've got uh, in this case I think it was three years between um, when I did the revision and when I did the original I'm quite objective about the problems in the painting 
uh, one of my biggest problems is the huge diagonals of that main tree um, bit and I'm not sure I ever completely reconciled that. I certainly improved it though. Um, but this is, you know, imagination that is guiding me and uh, one of the reasons that the redos can be really fun is that uh, you don't know what you're going to do exactly. But even there, there was a bit of photo reference at some point, as flawed as it was, and uh, as was proven by the fact that I made a big painting that I spent a lot of time on. It was an abject failure, uh, and I did not destroy it. I think I painted over the top of it. I hope I don't still have it, because every time I look at it, I, I look at it and I think, oh my god, I can't paint. <laughs> Which is, I think we addressed a lot of the imagination thing, but I'll get back into one of my other per favorite themes, which is supporting yourself as an artist. Really, really, really important to not um, keep your bad paintings around. Destroy them, paint over the top of them. Um, it's not so me, not, not so bothersome to have images of them on a hard drive or something that's pretty easy to overlook but the actual painting in uh, your life uh, is a bit harder to overlook but uh, I'll see if I'm dealing with that diagonal there or not let me see if I want to also want to make sure I did answer all of Jigger's questions um, you can have a lot of disastrous results uh, doing paintings strictly from the imagination but again uh, it all depends. Like uh, when I was uh, before I was a commercial illustrator, I worked at a place that would do artwork for. Um, we did a lot of framing too, but we would do artwork for lobbies and um, uh, hotel and motel rooms. And these would be formulaic uh, landscapes. Sometimes I would cut stencils out of plastic, like mylar, that could be reused, or we would do torn paper. Back in the 80s, there was a lot of that torn paper art, and uh, that stuff was just out of my imagination. And you know, you, you take uh, some triangular mountains, and you know, you got a triangle upside down for the water, and you've got uh, gradation in the sky, and you know, it's just all formulaic. And um, that's, I guess, ties into why a lot of paintings just from the imagination can be disastrous. Um, by the way, we're looking at, so that was October of this year, and then I let it sit for a long time. I was going to photograph it, and I says, no, I didn't actually finish this one. And I think I got interrupted. Uh, sorry, I'm digressing on my digressing, but that's what these short videos are for. Philosophy, uh, and I'm happy to answer questions, so you can ask me anything, either in the comments or via email. And you can always get to my email um, through my website. There's a contact form there. Uh, which, uh, you know, you send me an email and uh, I'll answer you. I always do. Okay, so, and yeah, so somebody saying, oh, Mike, I'd love to see you do a painting from your imagination, blah, blah, blah. Well, that may be a great idea for them. Um, for me, who knows, when I get to be 70, like uh, NS was before he died, and I've painted, you know, 5,000 landscape paintings, uh, and I can close my eyes and, and visualize everything. Um, yeah, I mean, I could even probably do some of that now, but to me, it's more important, I think, to have that fresh, the fresh influence of some reference coming in, and um, just to be aware of all the traps and inherent pitfalls uh, involved with using photographic reference, which is something I lecture about endlessly, and the reason I do is because it's one of the biggest um, obstacles to being a... Um, Ooh, is this painting not changing there? Is it just sitting on the palette wasting your time? Oh my goodness. Well, I'll leave some space at the end and I'll chop a bunch of that out. So sorry. Yeah. Um, so it could be disastrous. It could be brilliant. Actually, any painting you do, that's the last thing I want to say. Any painting you do is good painting. Okay, so if you have it in your mind to do something out of your imagination, and I, I do recommend maybe making a little thumbnail or something, you know, but uh, go for it, do it. Anyway, uh, I'm going to sign off now because I think this is not changed, so apparently it's a big clip of video with nothing changing. 
probably me talking to someone in the store. Uh, thank you for joining me today. I'll be back real soon with another video. And let me know what you think about that. Doing the live ones and then doing a sped up version too, possibly. Uh, just with commentary over the top. Yeah. Uh, that might be cool. Might be a good idea. Anyway, uh, until I see you again real soon, I'll be back, uh, like I said, with another video. And uh, I would really like you to take good care and stay out of trouble.